Good morning. Happy November 27th. Let me start by saying hi. My name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ and I'm addicted to sugar, flour, binging. And as of yesterday morning, I had God granted me with such a lovely revelation that I am also addicted to dieting. Susan Miller, thank you for your comment up underneath that video. Susan, you leave such beautiful, thoughtful comments and they typically include the prayers you're praying for us. That's so powerful and so appreciated. Susan, I know you can agree with me that dieting can absolutely become an addiction. And when I use the word addiction, what I'm referring to is dopamine down regulation. One of my daughters loves milk and she says, I'm addicted to milk. And I say, no, you're not. You're not addicted to milk. And she says, but can I just say that? And I said, no, you cannot just say that. I want, um, I want you to understand what addiction really means. You enjoy milk. You love milk. You have not had dopamine downregulated with regards to milk. <clears throat> so when I say addiction, I mean that some activity or some substance. So we can be absolutely addicted to both substances and behaviors, obviously. Drugs, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, sugar, flour, these are substances. Um, I'm thinking now I won't go into detail about uh, people that I know that have killed themselves on over-the-counter drugs. Um, these are substances, behaviors, shopping, shopping, gambling, pornography, um, social media. We can absolutely become addicted to behaviors. And what that boils down to is that they are such a source of dopamine hits for us. And dopamine is that feel good, relaxed feeling. It's a chemical released that gives us that high. And what happens is we turn to these sources that cause our brains to release so much, so much dopamine that our body says, hold up, this is too much dopamine. I'm gonna down regulate. I'm gonna do you a favor and produce less. So our body starts to send out less dopamine every time we engage in these activities, which means in order to get that good feeling, in order to get that original high, that original hit. What is it, Clyde? We have to engage in more and more which is what people mean when they say chasing that original high. It's why people often overdose because they're wanting to feel better and feel good. And it's taking more and more and more and more and more of the original activity to make that happen. So I realized yesterday that I've been tempted lately to diet and dieting has absolutely been a source of dopamine hits for me. It's been exciting and fun to see the scale the number on the scale go down. But I don't want weight loss to be what makes me feel better. Or I will need weight loss to be part of my life forever. And I definitely don't want that. I was talking to my mom about this yesterday. It's really no wonder people start a new diet program and do so good in the beginning. It's releasing dopamine to do good at the new diet. It's exciting and fun and all of a sudden you're thinking, this is exactly how I should be taking care of myself. I'm taking better care of myself than ever. I'm eating all these delicious foods and I'll never go back. I feel so good. I'm gonna remember this feeling. And then what happens is we get tired or hungry or angry or lonely or bored or dehydrated and we feel bad and we wanna feel better. And it's a whole lot easier to get dopamine to release from ingesting sugar and flour or binging than it is to chop vegetables and go to the trouble to do all the work, to follow the plan. So that honeymoon period wears off real quick. And you might start to notice it wears off quicker and quicker and quicker over time as you've attempted diet after diet after diet and your brain gets the message I know exactly where this is gonna end up. I might as well just get there quicker. Let's go ahead and wrap this up now. 
So dopamine's being released because we started a new diet and we're checking things off the list and it's so exciting and fun and, and we're hopeful and optimistic that this is gonna be the answer this time. And then sure enough, we feel bad for one reason or another and the, the reasons are truly infinite. And we wanna feel better. But just like I say on my more than what, more, more of whatever video, we wanna escape the pain. We wanna get out of the pain. And ironically, if we're at a seven on the pain scale from one to 10, we'll move our way on up to, the, to an eight or a nine just to get away from the pain of a seven. We'll do things that we know logically, we've experienced it, we know are gonna make us ultimately feel worse, but in the moment we'll feel better. So we're trading out long lasting health for immediate relief. And what we're seeking is dopamine. So if you find yourself starting a new diet program and you're doing really well, and then you fall off the rails and you're back in it, what you're seeking is comfort and relief. And what your brain knows subconsciously, your brain knows it can get that dopamine hit a whole lot quicker and a whole lot easier, in fact, instantly, from sugar and flour or whatever else you're addicted to. The addiction of dieting takes a lot of work. If you find yourself starting a new program and then falling off the wagon and you're back in the sugar and flour, let me encourage you to get yourself off the sugar and flour. And I recommend 90 days. That's been my experience. Right at 90 days, 30, 60, 90 days. Give yourself time, no sugar, no flour, no binging, and you avoid binging with boundaries. And if you follow God, he can, he can help you set those boundaries. I love you. I wanted to share that that's what's happening. We start a new diet and there's dopamine. We get dopamine hits from the diet. A lot of times that's not sustainable, but we still wanna feel better. So we turn right back to what we were originally avoiding in the first place. All seeking relief. To get out of the throes of addiction is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's not something that happens instantly. It's something that happens over time with surrender, support, and strategy. So I'm gonna start this day with water and water. I'm gonna hydrate myself with both H2O and the living water. John 6, 35, he whoever comes to me, this is Jesus speaking, um, I'm the bread of life and living water. He whoever comes to me will not be hungry or thirst again. Um, water and water. I like to start the day with water and water and I'm switching it up. I'm still gonna go for my gallon every day, but Yesterday, I just did, instead of 64 ounces twice, I'm doing 32 ounces four times, and that paced, that was, that was a better pace for me. Lately, I've been, I've had these really busy days, and I have not wanted to drink a lot of water throughout the day, especially traveling on the road, so I waited till late to drink that 64 ounces, and that's rough. A half a gallon all at once, I don't recommend that. So, I'm gonna do that. Also, Merry Merry Christmas! The girls and I will be getting into that. Let's see here. This is our construction zone. Um, I just noticed there's a shower and a bathtub in my backyard. We're gonna be getting into that little building there and getting all of our Christmas decorations out and decorating for Christmas. So, I want to go ahead and read the She Did It verse for day or verses. Today's a big one, Proverbs 31. Um, and I'm gonna explain to you all what my purple check marks will mean from here on out. And then I'm gonna have two separate videos, one where I read the Christmas story and one where I offer the Roman road and what I'm calling the John journey. These are paths to salvation. I talk a lot about following Jesus and for people that have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, 
I think that could be pretty confusing. So I want to offer some clarity there. All right, Proverbs 31, and then purple check mark talk, and then the rest of this video is a bunch of stuff I, fi I videoed for you all yesterday. Is videoed a word? Filmed. I filmed it yesterday. Okay, Proverbs 31. Before I jump into this, Proverbs 31 is a lot about um, women. In fact, there is a huge, Lisa Turkhurst, the author of Made to Crave, I believe she's the one that runs a, a ministry called Proverbs 31. Down here in the notes in my, this is a Life Application Study Bible, um, NIV. I love this Bible. It's the one I recommend. Life Application Study Bible, New International Version. Um, down here in the notes, it says, Proverbs has a lot to say about women. Excuse me, Proverbs 10, 31 through 31. How fitting that the book ends with a picture of a woman of strong character, great wisdom, and many skills, and great compassion. Some people have mistaken the idea that the ideal woman in the Bible is retiring, servile, and entirely domestic. Not so. This woman is an excellent wife and mother. She is also a manufacturer, importer, manager, realtor, farmer, seamstress, upholsterer, and merchant. Her strength and dignity do not come from her amazing achievements. However, they are a result of her reverence for God. In our society where physical appearance counts for so much, it may surprise us to realize that her appearance is never mentioned. Her attractiveness comes entirely from her character. The woman described in this chapter has outstanding abilities. Her family's social position is high. In fact, she may not be one woman at all. She may be a composite portrait of ideal womanhood. Do not see her as a model to imitate in every detail. Your days are not long enough to do everything she does. See her instead as an inspiration to be all you can be. We can't be just like her, but we can learn from her industry, integrity, and resourcefulness. Proverbs 31. Sayings of King Lemuel. The sayings of King Lemuel, an oracle his mother taught him. O oh, my son, O oh, son of my womb, O oh, son of my vows, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what the law decrees and deprive all of, of the oppressed, deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Give beer to those who are perishing, wine to those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. So this is all Proverbs 1 through 9. Little is known about Lemuel except that he was a king who received wise teachings from his mother. His name means devoted to God. Some believe that Lemuel and Agur were both from the kingdom of Massa in North Arabia. Drunkenness might be understandable among dying people in great pain, but it is inexcusable for national leaders. Alcohol clouds the mind and can lead to injustice and poor decisions. Leaders have better things to do than anesthetize themselves with alcohol. So, this is basically a letter um, to King Lemuel from his wise mother. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what the law decrees and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Give beer to those who are perishing, wine to those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. So she's saying, It's not for you, Lemuel. You're a leader. Starting in verse 10 all the way through 31 is where... We hear about this godly woman, which like the whoever did the commenting, the commentary down below suggested this might not even be about one woman in particular, but um, a composite portrait of ideal womanhood. 
The wife of noble character. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, no harm, all the days for life. She selects wood and flax and works with eager hands. She's like a merchant. She's like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes a seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She's clothed with, clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her bring her praise at the city gate. She is clothed in strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. Proverbs 31, 25. Amen to that. Okay, so my purple check marks on my month calendars up here. We had super September, awesome October, neat November, and December, drum roll. December's coming, Monday. My purple check marks, they've come full circle. In September, I had purple check marks, meaning I did it. I nailed it. I was eating my particular meals and nothing more. And I did that. I have the data. It's framed in the other room for something like 19 days before I had a bonus meal. <laughs> and I was laughing with Cassie because when I'm showing my life on YouTube and I'm, I said, I can't binge. And she said, well, you could. <laughs> Good point. I could. Um, God helped me navigate that. I had a bonus meal that had bound boundary ish boundaries ish. It wasn't weighed and measured, but it was a sandwich and some um, banana ice cream. And I needed the calories. I consider sticking to a certain exact program. What are those knuckles? Somebody tell me they're white, white knuckles. That feels like holding my breath. There's no better way to word that. And if we hold our breath for long enough, we're eventually gonna gasp for air. And when I hold my breath long enough and I restrict my calories long enough and I keep it to a certain number, regardless of what my life is looking like, regardless if I'm renovating my home and training poodles and building fences, and um, if I'm out there with my muck boots on, fighting weeds that are kid you not 10 feet tall, still giving myself that certain, that's like asking my vehicle to go on a, on an unexpected road trip, but still giving it the exact, uh, still allocating, giving it the exact allotment, the exact allowance of gasoline as I normally do when I just run around here and take my kids to school and back. When we give ourselves a certain amount of calories and say, this is all you get, and the goal is to stick to this forever and not take into consideration that we're burning more than usual, I invariably, I'll speak for myself, gasp for calories like I gasp for oxygen when I hold my breath. So in September, I had purple check, purple check, purple check, purple check, and thank you all for joining me on this journey. Um, I, I don't believe I would have set out and I definitely would not have kept going. I, I don't believe that. I don't, I don't 
I don't, I do believe I would have quit. I don't believe I would have kept going without you all. So September, you start to see a green square here and there. By October, God had me preaching, writing sermons, burning both ends of the candle. I've said many times, chess players burn 6,000 calories in one weekend sitting, playing chess because of the adrenaline pumping. I had, starting in October, lots of green square, yellow square. I'm seeing them now. All sorts of stuff popping up. Dr. Phil says, we start one thing for one reason, we continue it for another. I started giving myself more calories because I needed them. I kept giving myself more calories because I was used to giving myself more calories. Um, And here I am with this November calendar that looks so interesting. There's a lot going on. And I asked God yesterday, all right, Lord, do you want me to continue to write down everything I eat? And he answered my question with a question. And he said, do you keep record of every gift everyone gives you? And that answered that for me. I don't. So I'm going to let go of all these colored squares and all these little keys. Now, hear me when I say this. If you are addicted to sugar and flour and binging, I highly recommend writing down what you eat. In fact, if you're beginning this journey of detaching from sugar and flour and binge eating, I recommend writing it down the night before and committing to it and sticking to it so that your prefrontal cortex is making the decisions. You're not allowing your basal ganglia, the part of your brain that's more involuntary and and this is your rational reasoning critical thinking decision-making part of your brain let your prefrontal cortex make good decisions for you in the moment when you're well fed and rested and then stick to those so hear me when I say this for two years or at least a year and a half I did write down what I was going to eat and I it helped me recover it helped me get into recovery it helped me get out of the throes of my addiction of sugar flour and binging I'm in a different stage now and God is He's He's allowing me to enjoy the simplicity of these waters that He's just spit me out into. It's like I've been on a raging river holding on for dear life as we traveled. And I'm here. He spit me out into calm waters. And in these calm waters I get to enjoy some simplicity. In fact, the simplicity of just a purple check mark that now for me means I follow Jesus. Whether or not I get a purple check mark for the day comes down to did I or did I not follow Jesus? If I did, purple check mark. And what I mean by that is did I eat only what he gave me? And if I wanted more, did I ask for more? Matthew 7, 7. Ask, knock, seek, ask, seek, knock. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be answered. And when my kids ask, they whine and I say, ask. I tell them to ask. I tell them, ask and you shall receive, not whine and you shall receive. So they'll stop whining and they'll ask. And sometimes the answer is no. So this is what God gives me daily. This is my given my given is this these four meals plus my coffee and just because this is my given I don't want to take this for granted I want to appreciate be awake and aware of the gifts I'm given acknowledge them be grateful for them and if I want more than that then I'll ask starting today and this is going to be new for me I will not be sharing pictures of everything I eat anymore. I thought I was going to do that on and through December, but you all bear with me. Proverbs 19.21, that's what this boils down to. Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans made by man, but God's purpose will prevail. So I thought I was going to continue showing you all everything I eat. I am positive that on my channel, there are thousands of pictures of these prescribed meals. Th- literally thousands. 
and I'll still show you pictures here and there. I'm going to make a beautiful Roy G. Biv spread tomorrow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Um, fruit. I'll probably snap a picture of that to show you. I might snap a picture of what my, my Thanksgiving lunch is. A fruit, a protein, a vegetable, and a fat. And I might do that for my own sake, for some accountability to show you all, just to enjoy the fact that I have you all to share that with. So from now on, my calendars have come full circle. They started off with purple check marks that meant I was holding on tight. And then there became a whole host of all sorts of stuff all sorts of colored squares and symbols and now we're back to purple check marks did I or did I not follow Jesus did I accept the gifts he gave me and eat nothing more than what he gave me and I told my husband this morning I said let's follow Jesus I'm confident that he will lead us into the bodies that he wants us in and I'm 100% confident that we want to be in the bodies he wants us in. We want to be close to him. He knows what he's doing with us. So here's my calendar from yesterday. Just that simple. Purple check mark. I follow Jesus. And I drink a gallon of water. So that's it on November 27th. It is a beautiful sunny Saturday and we are, oh, my phone's plugged in. We are going to hopefully have a lot more stuff that looks like this around the house today. I love y'all dearly and enjoy the rest of this video. This is um, from yesterday and it is me making my way through the day with a brand new perspective. Maybe a, a refocus or a realization that God is the source, everything else is a resource, and every good and perfect gift is from above. And these meals that I've been eating and the snacks that he's been allowing me to have are good and perfect and from him. I love you all dearly. I will see you tomorrow on November 28th. Bye. As I was deleting data off my phone to make room for more data, I accidentally deleted all of the video footage that I took yesterday to, to show you. It was already woven into this video. But anything with an orange sweatshirt I just deleted and <laughs> I can't recover it because I thought, oh that's old. I forgot I recorded yesterday um, stuff for today. One thing I know for sure that I shared with you all is that as I made my way through the day and drew these little hearts on my hand, I'm doing the same thing today. God gives me five gifts every day, and sometimes more than that. But definitely these five. I want to acknowledge so that I can appreciate each one of them. And I noticed a couple things. I noticed at one meal, I wanted more right away. And so, as I was saying yesterday, it got kind of weird and cringy. <laughs> um, when I was weighing and measuring my food, and I was like, you know how... Um, in the dieting world, we're taught about BLTs, bites, licks, and tastes. I didn't want to lick the spoon, but I kind of wanted like whatever was on the spoon to go. It was, I had this like greedy moment of wanting more. And I realized we don't do that when people give us gifts, typically. We say, thank you, this is wonderful, thank you so much. We don't instantly, seamlessly, as for more, as like a knee-jerk reaction. Like, if my kids drew me a picture, I'm not like, this is so cute, do it, I want another one. <laughs> Give me another one or draw something else on the top. It's not like this frenzied panic for more. And if I really see these meals as gifts, I wanna catch those behaviors. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 5. But we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take our thoughts captive, making them obedient to Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5.
let's take these thoughts captive. We cannot capture them unless we can see them and catch them and identify them. So when I'm enjoying one of these gifts, and I'm drawing these hearts on my hand for a couple different reasons, so that I ab appreciate every single one of these five gifts. But also so that I can see, I've already had three, only two more, and I can pace myself in my mentality. But as we see them as gifts and we receive them, I want to position my heart, be postured, to be grateful like I am with other gifts given to me. And I never immediately, not only, not even ask, but tell the giver to give me more. So that was during one meal. During another meal, I noticed something quite different. I noticed that I didn't want the gift I was about to get. It was late in the evening. I'm sure Graylin, I have lots of videos on Graylin. G-H-R-E-L-I-N, I think. That hunger hormone that kicks in in the evening. That was probably part of it. But I had also worked really, really hard and sort of wanted to celebrate. And I don't usually celebrate with vegetables. But the gift that was about to be given to me was 14 ounces of vegetables, a protein, and a fat. I had all sorts of other ideas. And that's when I realized, again, if this is a gift being given to me, I want to appreciate it for what it is especially when it's coming from God, my Father in Heaven, who knows me better than I know myself, who has a perspective that I don't, whose ways are higher than mine, whose thoughts are higher than mine. I can trust Him with me, with my life. So I caught myself again and realized, I'm gonna be grateful for this. And I was sharing with you all in this silly video with my orange sweatshirt on saying like, I don't want him to hear me, but I wasn't really excited about this as if I can hide from him. But I also said in my video, I would never ask God, I know better. I know better than to say, can we kinda, can we, can we chuck this and maybe instead have some, something covered in melted cheese maybe? I know better than that. And I said in my video yesterday that I deleted today, I can just imagine him looking down at me and saying, You ask me over and over to help you lose weight. And then when I help you, you fight it. Have you all ever heard? And that's why the, the three emojis. I have not. Let's hope. I'm hoping the three emojis are something like a canoe or a kayak, a ship and a helicopter. That's my hope. We'll see here in a minute. Have you ever heard the story of the man drowning out in the middle of the ocean? And he prays to God, Lord, please help me, save me, I'm drowning. And a man comes by on a kayak and says, hop in, I'll save you. And he says, no, no, thank you. No, thank you, I prayed to God, God's gonna help me, God's gonna save me. And the man says, okay, and he left. A little while later, a ship comes by. And from the top of the deck, a man yells, we're tossing down a rope, come on, climb in, we'll save you. And the man says, no, thank you, no, thank you, I really appreciate it, but I prayed to God, God's gonna save me and the ship leaves. Finally, a helicopter comes. And with a loud voice says, we're here for you. We're tossing down a rope ladder, climb on, grab a hold. And the man says, no, thank you, I prayed to God. God's gonna save me. The man drowns and goes to heaven. And he says, God, what's up with that? I prayed, I prayed that you would save me. And God said, I sent you a kayak, a ship, and a helicopter. I want to make sure I don't do that. I want to make sure that I grab a hold to what God is giving me. The ability to surrender, lots of support and strategies. And I was joking yesterday, when I get to the pearly gates, I don't want to squeeze through and then ask God, Lord, why did you not help me lose weight? <laughs> and have him say, I tried. <laughs> That's it. Enjoy these pictures. I love you all dearly. I will see you tomorrow on November 28th. Bye.
And Sherry, I about got you, girl. I'm working on that manicure. Um, I sat there yesterday balancing my checkbooks and kept having restaurant thought, restaurant thought over and over and over in my head. My husband was gone with the boys. I was home with the girls and thought that'd be fun to go to a restaurant. I probably thought that 17 times and I was aware that God was not offering that to me as a gift. So tally, tally, tally. I took those thoughts captive. Pretty soon you and I are going to get to take ourselves to the salon. I'm still pretty good here on mine. I'm going to stretch this as long as I can. But Sherry, I got you, girl. I think I'm up to almost 30 tallies. And please, when you get your manicure, send us pictures.